What's going on, everybody? This is James Drake with 5K Insight, and that is our gigantic logo as a wallpaper, uh, a little bit of shameless promotion. Today, we wanted to talk a little bit about Premiere Pro CS6 and Speedgrade CS6, specifically using the uh, Red Epic and Scarlet files. Um, the workflow I'm going to show you here is pretty good for using uh, or for, for smaller projects and you know you can use your own judgment as to what you think a small project is I wouldn't edit a feature or a long short this way um, online it's just too hard on the system it's gonna have to pull too much information so this is kind of relegated to the shorter projects but that being said uh, let's go ahead and start a new project here just call it BMW 11 something creative and call this rough one uh, I've already selected my sequence settings here and we will be using 5k 24 to 1 23976 so that's all good and so first step this is really important a lot of people want to go in and hit import and you can do it this way but you do not want to do it this way so you navigate to where your files are you find your oh there it is your red digital magazine hit import and a few minutes later it'll import all your files here and say some things weren't supported blah 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 and sure enough there's all your files well that's all well and good except that using this method does not account for clip spanning which means that there are sometimes duplicate clips that's a hard thing to say duplicate clips in your project panel so you'll notice that this clip 116.23 is exactly the same as this clip 116.23 that's a problem if you have an editor that's working with a lot of footage that's really the last thing you want to happen so the way you need to bring footage in from here on out is use your media browser down here and if it's not open already then you just go ahead and workspace uh, just kidding it's down here somewhere media browser there it is shift 8 it'll open it up in one of these panels uh, go ahead and find your footage that way you'll notice that it has these nice thumbnails which makes life so easy and wonderful and we'll go ahead and make a new bin here call it footage drag all our stuff in there and you'll notice that after it imports there are no duplicates you'll see that the C001 that stands for clips so you got one two three four five perfect no duplicate clips let's move on so now you put your edit together I'm just gonna throw something together here in about four seconds not gonna be pretty um, if you're wondering this story is about a kid that does not want to ride to work with his dad or to school rather and the reason is because they have this really awesome uh, BMW it's a cardboard BMW and it took us like nine hours to color that that's all crayon anyway that's a, that's a that's all a different story so put your clips in the timeline kind of get what you want out of it and i'm not doing a real amazing job editing here but that's not the purpose of this so we'll go ahead and stick these in i know it's so good now a lot of people are using this send to Adobe speed grade command, which is great if you're using DSLR footage or AVC HD or any of those types of deals. But when you're using red footage or you're using something with raw, you want to check and see if your camera is supported by speed grade. In this instance, the R3D files are supported and you have a lot of flexibility that you wouldn't have if you use this send to Adobe speed grade because again, it's creating 10 bit DPX files. You'll also notice if I click this and you have to save a speed grade project, it's going to take a little while because even if you're using, say, uh, DSLR footage, it has to convert those files to DPX. So it's essentially doing an export of your timeline. You'll notice that this is a 13, oh, I'm sorry, 20 second project and I still don't see a progress bar. This is a reasonably fast machine. But because it's a 5K file, it has to down res it, it has to do all these things. We just don't want to do it this way. So we'll cancel out of that. What you want to do instead, specifically with Red Epic and Scarlet uh, footage, is hit EDL. Export your EDL. Uh, go ahead and export it as whatever you want. Uh, save it somewhere you'll remember. 
And then what I do at this step is I quit out of Premiere Pro because I want to have the maximum amount of, of RAM available to me. Uh, unless you know some of you guys have those 64 gig RAM systems, I unfortunately do not. So we'll go ahead and open up Speed Grade here. Pop it open. Load her up. All right, so we have our EDL from Premiere, and of course I got a text message. So go ahead and navigate out to where your project is, wherever you might have saved that EDL. I save it under this convenient speed grade folder. One thing that's really cool about speed grade, there's a lot of cool things, but one thing I really like is the ability to uh, sort by modified date. You know, if I had a, a lot of files in here, like if I was looking at the entire folder of stuff here, I can sort by modified date and then you'll see, you know, there's some autosave projects and then very quickly you'll see your EDL pop up because it's one of the last things that was modified. So it's really nice to have that functionality. So anyway, uh, go ahead and open up your EDL, bam, you'll see it pops in the timeline down here. And if you head over to the monitor, clicking up here, you'll see, hmm, interesting. There's, uh, there's not any footage there. Well, it's easy problem to solve. Go ahead and find your footage, which I conveniently placed in the same place. And uh, what you're gonna do is down here, uh, you hit timeline, reels and then once oh one last thing this has to be sequences from folder plus subtree that's basically like saying include all folders underneath this folder and if you have things like r3d files where folders uh house clips then you want to obviously have that selected that's a pretty convenient function and then go ahead and hit load from desktop from here on out it's basically just uh grading as you would uh, in any other program. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff to be said in speed grade, tons of really cool presets to get you started. Um, and you can start modifying these in a jillion ways, depending on, you know, what your look's supposed to be and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, the, the secondaries are super powerful. Uh, I love the mask tool. It's very simple, uh, a little bit simpler than Resolve's mask tool, in my opinion. That's kind of the basics of getting your R3D files from Premiere into speed grade. I uh, hope it was helpful. If you guys have questions, shoot us an email. And if you have any requests for things you'd like to see, by all means, let us know. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon.